Welcome to the Good News Radio Broadcast. Hello, this is Brenda Harris greeting you in the precious name of Jesus. Before Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Have you ever been lost? I mean truly lost. I've been lost three times in my life. It's a very scary feeling. And I had a dream about being lost. And when I woke up, I was thinking this dream shows the state of many people who are lost and without God. In my dream, I went to this office where I was going to work for the day. I was going on my lunch break and decided to deposit a check at the bank. I had received a check for one dollar in the mail. I did not know my way around the town yet. Someone offered to take me to the mall where I could deposit my check at a bank. When we got to the mall, it was jam-packed with people. There was a celebration of some sort going on in town. I couldn't walk comfortably in the mall because it was so crowded. The lady who took me to the mall pointed me in the direction of the bank. I told her I would be back in a few minutes. I went on into the bank. I told an account person that I wanted to deposit my dollar. She told me, to have a seat at this particular table. I sat down where there were about six other ladies already seated. A few minutes passed and I realized that there was some sort of reason that I had received the dollar in the mail. I was going to have to sit through a presentation. I asked the account lady what this was all about. She was very curt with me and told me to wait. After a few more minutes I said, I don't have this kind of time. I've got to get back. And the lady just completely ignored what I was saying and began giving her presentation to the other ladies. I picked up my purse and hurriedly left. And I thought, I've been in here at least 20 minutes. I hope my ride hasn't left. I went into the mall and did not see the lady who had brought me to the mall. People were whizzing by me like crazy. It felt like wall-to-wall -wall people. I stood in one spot looking around and realized that I was lost. I didn't know where I was. I didn't know how to get back to the office. I couldn't recall the name of the office. I couldn't even recall the name of the city I was in. Talk about scary. I was standing still and looking around when the realization hit me that I was well and truly lost. There was a time that I was lost for real, in real life, and this was no dream. I was in my thirties living in Georgia. We went with some friends on a camping trip with our horses. We went on a trail ride that day. We made it back to camp that evening and had supper. Back then, I was so full of energy and pep all the time. And I wanted to go for a walk with my husband down one of the pedestrian trails in the forest. We left, and we were walking along. But it didn't take very long until it became very dark. I mean, it became dark fast out in the forest. It got so dark I couldn't see my hand in front of my face. Talk about scary. We were walking along the trees groping around to see if we could follow the line of the trees. I looked off into the distance and saw a glimmer of light. And we crept along. We kept walking and being very careful not to stumble and fall towards the light. I said, What if there are lions and tigers out there? My husband said, Lions are in Africa, silly. I said, I know that. It just feels like there are lions and tigers out there. When you are in darkness, you can't see. What if something shows up to attack you? You can't see it coming. We made our way to the light and saw by the light of the dim moon that we were now in an open field and we saw a cabin. We went to the cabin, laid down on the floor to try to sleep. My husband promptly fell asleep. I couldn't sleep. I was listening for lions and tigers. Later on, I heard this bugle sound. We got up and went outside and saw these lights. 
our friend had called the forest rangers. They found us. Another time I got lost in real life was when we were on another horse ride. We were in a vast forest in Georgia where miles and miles of horse trails were set up. We had ridden until time to go back to the horse trailer. We rode toward the horse trailer and realized that we had lost our way. We were on the wrong trail. It was getting dark. When it hit me that we were lost, I began to do some tall praying. We could be stuck in the deep dark forest all night long with no shelter, food, or water. I said, Lord, lead us to the right trail. And God answered my prayer. We picked the right trail back. That is one time in my life that I know God answered my prayer. When I was a kid, I got lost when I was walking home from school. I took the wrong way and realized that I was in the wrong neighborhood. I felt scared, but tried not to show it. We were living in Wisconsin at the time, and I was learning my way around. And during this time that I was lost, I was walking down the sidewalk. And I remember feeling God's presence. Pretty soon, my dad's car drove up. I was so relieved, and he said to me, You looked like you knew where you were going. There is about 7.4 billion people in the world. Many of those are lost, spiritually speaking. They may look like they know where they're going, but they are walking in darkness. The sad part of it is, they have sold the most precious possession they own for a dollar, the lowest denomination of paper currency. They have sold their soul cheap. You might as well say, they have given it away, and they have taken the lie of the devil through the presentation that he gives to their mind. Jesus said, What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his own soul? That shows you how costly your soul is. You cannot put a price on your soul. Your soul is priceless. Some people will realize that they are lost. But many will not. Jesus seeks and searches for the lost. He will go to great lengths to find people and save them. Will they listen and understand their need for a Savior? Luke fifteen four and 24 says, What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost, until he find it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing, and when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repents, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Lost souls are those who walk in spiritual darkness. John 1 5 says, The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness understood it not. John 1 4 says that Jesus was the light of all men. John twelve forty eight says, But all who reject me and my message will be judged on the day of judgment by the truth I have spoken. Hebrews 2 2 says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Romans 8 8 says, Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Romans 8 9 says, If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. Romans 8, 12 through 14 says, So then, brethren, we are under obligation, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you are living according to the flesh, you must die. But if by the Spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 says, Satan, who is the god of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. People are in darkness. They are lost without God. But thanks be to God, He is searching and seeking for the lost. 
God's Holy Spirit is working in the world to save those who are lost. There will be those who will listen and understand. Will you listen and understand today? Will you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? I say personal because God is a personable God. He has not alienated himself from us. He's not way off in heaven, not paying attention to anything we do. He wants to be a friend that sticks closer than a brother. That's the kind of Savior I want and the kind of Savior I have. The kind that you can pray to and he hears and answers. The kind that you can feel his presence throughout the day as you go about your daily routines. The kind who is there exactly when you need him. The moment you need him. He says in his word, you will call upon me and I will answer. Call upon him today. Pray to him in your own way. I heard of a converted atheist prayer. He said, God, if you are real, I am on the hook forever. God heard his prayer. This man is now preaching the gospel wherever he can. Come to Jesus today. Isaiah 9, 2 says, Those walking in darkness have seen a great light. And now this concludes the message today. Again, this is Brenda Harris blessing you in Christ's name. May God's face shine upon you and show you his great favor.